Every 19 minutes, someone overdoses from one of these, with a majority now being prescription drugs. Created to help us, not hurt us, prescription medicines are being misused and abused at an alarming rate. The cause? Experts say it's a combination of reasons, but topping the list is an overall shift in the way we look at and treat prescription medicines that has turned their misusage into such an epidemic. Of the overdoses with prescription drugs that have occurred, more than 75% of those people who have overdosed admit that they get medications from friends and family, not for prescriptions that were prescribed or medications prescribed specifically for them. So the intent is really part of the problem. People are sharing their medications because they care about people. They don't want them to hurt. They don't want them to be stressed. And in our general population, people believe that prescription drugs are safe because they are prescribed by a practitioner, that there are minimum risks for that, otherwise they wouldn't be prescribed. And that's a fallacy because any drug, no matter how simple, even over the counters, have significant risk. Dr. Mike O'Neill is no stranger to this issue. As a clinical pharmacist for over 20 years, his expertise is also used within the DEA and the U.S. Attorney's Office, where he serves as a consultant on prescription drug diversion and abuse. Knowing the ins and outs of human behavior as it relates to prescription drug usage, he feels that the drugs aren't the problem, rather the cultures surrounding them. And in our culture, people want a pill for everything. That is the trend in society today for just about everything. You can't sleep, you take a pill. You can't stay awake, you take a pill. You're hurt, you take a pill. We want immediate cessation of any stress or pain now. And, and that's not realistic and it's definitely not healthy. We have got to change the comfort level that people have with prescription medications. If we're taking them on a daily basis, now they're going to be accessible to us on a daily basis, right there, uh, you know, where we could take a glass of water on, on the top of our, our kitchen counters. So people coming into our home now have access to prescriptions that they may be abusing. So now that accessibility becomes an issue. So what do we do with those drugs? Uh, do we have to hide them? Uh, do we have to secure them more properly? And I, and I think the answer is yes. Uh, we, we need to secure those drugs. Additionally, Leftover or unused prescriptions account for almost 30% of the overall medications being abused in the United States. One of the bigger groups uh, abusing prescription drugs are our 12 and 13 year olds. And these are the kids that are around the house, that are in everybody else's home, in their neighbor's home, in their coach's home, uh, in their friend's house. And with the pills laying around, um, unfortunately statistics are telling us that this is where this younger population now are getting their drugs. Being aware of the following behaviors can dramatically change current cultures and begin to control this epidemic. Sharing drugs is dangerous and illegal. Store prescription medicines out of sight and out of common access areas for children and teenagers. Learn proper disposal methods when throwing away leftover or unused medication. They do save millions of lives every day, whether for blood pressure or diabetes or depression or anxiety. There will always be a need to use these medications. The issue is using the medications appropriately. We have to teach the balance of appropriate prescribing, appropriate medication use, you know, in concert with the diseases that they have and respect of these drugs. The more informed we are about the medicines we bring into our homes, the greater the chance for proper usage. In fact, studies show that kids who learn about the risks of drugs from their parents are 50% less likely to use them. Parents must also set a good example. When we talk about storing medications and putting them up, or where do we keep medications and people think in the medicine cabinets, very few people keep all their medicines in a medicine cabinet. They keep them on the kitchen table. They keep them on the counter next to the stove or next to the toaster. They keep them in the pantry next to the drinking glasses above the sink. And so the ex constant day-to-day -day exposure with these younger kids doesn't teach them any respect. Both Mike O'Neill and Charlie Sion agree that the potential to adjust the course of this epidemic will come from widespread awareness and an accurate understanding of these medicines. It is an awareness issue. 
Uh, I think sometimes that, that it should begin with a, with a practitioner who dispenses that medication, who prescribes that medication uh, to his patient. Uh, you know, basically spending a few minutes with that patient saying, these legitimate drugs, these drugs that are there to relieve your pain and to help you through your daily life are drugs now that are being abused. This is a drug that could be abused by someone who could remove them from your house. On a day-to-day -day basis, my focus is threefold. One is to educate other practitioners, whether they're physicians, nurses, pharmacists, other healthcare workers about appropriate prescribing. The second part of this is educating law enforcement and working with them about how to identify substance abuse and drug diversion, how to do interdiction and spot these types of events as trafficking is going on to minimize the few people that are driving a large part of this process. And then thirdly, to deal with you know, the public at large, whether it's in community coalitions or in school systems, as we've talked about earlier, in educating people about the importance of prescription drugs and their role in society and the respect for them and not as a new poison that we should be afraid of. In the wrong hands, some of the safest and effective pharmaceuticals on the market can be deadly. The momentum behind this issue is palpable as experts from around the country work to make a difference and save lives. If you have questions or want to learn more, send an email or visit us online.